evening, everybody. I'm going to make the argument for prohibition, for prohibiting prohibition, that is. Let's grant for the moment the underlying premise of the motion the cryptos are bad, so let's ban them. I'm reminded of my friend Walter Block's wonderful book, Defending the Undefendable. The pimp, the prostitute, the scab, slumlord, libeler, moneylender, and so on. So you get the idea. So why defend the indefensible? I'll tell you why. First, who's to say what's indefensible or not? Who gets to decide what's bad and what's not? On what authority, on whose authority, and for whom? I'll come back to this. The second, if you, if you ban something that's bad, you generally get outcomes that are worse. Okay, I don't know about you, but I always prefer a bad outcome when the alternative is a worse outcome. Now, the prohibitionists think, whatever they're trying to prohibit, that they're choosing between good and bad, but the reality is they're choosing between bad and worse. They just don't realise it, because they don't see the unintended consequences of their proposals. So if you vote for prohibition, then those unintended consequences are on you. An example, the United States prohibited booze in 1920. Did prohibition achieve its objectives? Well, hell no, but it sure made the Mafia rich. The booze business went underground. Bootlegging became big business. Speakeasies sprang up everywhere. Prohibition triggered a lot of gang warfare in which many people were killed. It also had adverse health consequences. And I'm not just talking about people getting killed, because people were drinking badly produced liquor that often poisoned them. So to quote Mencken, years of prohibition have at least had this one benign effect. They have completely disposed of the favourite arguments of the prohibitionists. So prohibition was a total failure and was eventually abandoned in 1933. Prohibition has made nothing but trouble, said one expert afterwards. That expert was Al Capone. <laughs> now, then we had the war on drugs, basically a replay on a bigger scale. In the United States, Colombia, Mexico, Philippines, Europe and elsewhere, hundreds of thousands of deaths and never mind the rest of it, including massive numbers of people incarcerated. So similar to US prohibition, but on a bigger scale. Now, I'm not suggesting that prohibiting cryptos would have these same effects on the same scale, but I am suggesting that prohibiting cryptos would have bad consequences that we cannot predict. So if there's one lesson to be learned from the history of prohibition, it is this, that prohibition never achieves its intended outcomes but always generates a lot of undesirable ones, and these are always unintended. So prohibition should be banned. Now in general, we have three possible policy responses to something that we disapprove of. Number one, we can hold our nose and tolerate it. On the grounds that other people like it, and the government messing with it will make a bad situation worse. That would be my choice. Number two, we can ban it. As I said, prohibition always has unintended consequences, which are also beyond anyone's control. Number three, we can regulate it or tax it. Now, regulation and taxation give ways to mitigate those side effects. Regulation allows the state to establish some quality control over a product. And taxation is a highly effective way of reducing its consumption though not necessarily by much. So why would you ever rationally prefer prohibition to regulation or taxation? That's the question. I would say never. It's up to the opposite, the other side to make that case. In this world. I've argued that you should vote against the motion even if you're anti-crypto. But I would insist that cryptos also have their benefits. And first they offer people a way to escape financial repression. I'm thinking of Bitcoin here. Um, if I live under a regime that is trying to steal my wealth, I can convert to Bitcoin and move abroad with my wealth intact. I just have to remember my crypto details. The ability to protect my wealth from predators is important, especially when that predator is your own government. If you prevent me from buying Bitcoin, you are preventing me from protecting myself. 
And second, cryptos allow the possibility that in the future we will have non-inflationary cryptocurrencies that will be superior to current central bank currencies and hopefully displace them. And third, cryptos provide more choice. More choice is generally good and leads to many other benefits that my colleagues can better describe than me. And lastly, if you prohibit cryptos, you are not only trying to take away the benefits that people get from them now, but you are trying to take away the benefits they might get in the future. So looking back, to give an example, would it have been a clever idea to ban early cards because they generated a lot of smoke and noise, or because they would create a lot of horse unemployment? <laughs> Nay, I don't think so. <laughs> Spent ages thinking about that. <laughs> but there were many who made these arguments at the time who all look rather foolish now. Now, I know the objections to cryptos. There's the protectionist argument. That there are a lot of crypto scammers out there who prey on vulnerable people. Yes, I know that. But people will still engage in cryptos even if you make it illegal. And if you do that, you are depriving those very vulnerable people of their existing legal protection, such as it is, which isn't much to say. So that doesn't protect the people who need protecting. If you have to intervene, it's better to regulate than to ban. Then there is the bad guys argument. And we should ban cryptos because bad people use them to do bad things. Now this is a very silly argument. If you accept this argument, then you are agreeing that any immunity that we all use should be banned merely because bad things, bad guys do bad things with it. But any immunity, we should ban parks because bad people do bad things in it, like smoke dope. We should, <laughs> we should ban banks because drug dealers might deposit their drug profits in them, and so forth. You see, I hope you see what is wrong with this argument. It's a classic reductio. Never mind that the rest of us rely on those same amenities too. Then there's the argument that cryptos are used to launder money. Now, I know that too, but banning cryptos won't stop money laundering. When I last checked, the biggest money laundering vehicles were banks and accounting firms. Not cash, not crypto. Think of Dansky Bank, a quarter of a trillion money laundered under the noses of European bank regulators who were supposed to stop this. Or the Panama Papers, it revealed all the politicians, uh, you know, evade, not, not evading, yes, evading tax. So the commonality is, of these scandals is money laundering on a truly industrial scale. So you might ask, what would I do about this problem? I'd get rid of the anti-money regulation, anti-money laundering regulations. That'll solve the problem. These, these regulations don't work. The bad guys know their ways around them and they impose massive costs on banks and their customers to obtain zero tangible benefit for society as a well. whole. So what would I do about cryptos? Nothing. I'd just leave them alone. <laughs> Let the flowers bloom, but pick them at your own risk. In this sense, a bit like mushrooms. <laughs> To quote, to paraphrase the great American economist Tom Sewell, the fundamental policy problem is not to decide which is best or what is good or bad, but who is to decide what is best. Or to paraphrase Lenin, he said, who whom? The fundamental political problem is uh, who does what to whom. So different people have different views. It's not your place or my place to suggest that other people should not be allowed to use cryptos if they wish, but at their own risk. Therefore, I submit, you should not, you should permit others to use cryptos whether you think they're beneficial or not, and therefore you should vote against the motion. Thank you all.